So back again. Hopefully it doesn't crash again. Yeah, so I have to redraw it. What did we had? Now we want to interpret it graphically, what we have written down here. This is all what we are talking now about. This is an idea he obtained the Nobel Prize afterwards. So we had delta kt, s, yt, and yt itself, capital, and then neoclassical production function times savings, bending a little bit down, and now starting from the origin linear line with slope d for the depreciation of capital. Well, let's bend it a little bit more to the right. Delta KT. Well, where do we find now our steady state? Uh, this I also have to. We look at the change over time. And then when So is capital over all increasing or changing or developing to a steady state where Delta KT plus one equals zero. And then we have SYT minus Delta KT. Where do we find this steady state? Uh, in our diagram. Pardon? Which two lines intersect? <laughs> which one? At which point of intersection? This one or this one? Look at this condition here. So this is representing SYT and this is representing delta YT. And this, of course, in this case should be the same. SYT equals delta KT. So it is this point here, of course. So here we have K star, our steady state, and this one is then our steady state production. And this is steady state 
capital. Well, and then we can think of, as we always do, if we're looking at these steady states, equilibria, are they stable or not? And then let's see if we are starting somewhere here. K0. Done. We know, okay, we are saving and investing that much with capital stock K0. We are going into our production function and S times our production. We are saving and this is used for new capital. But in the same time, we have to depreciate our capital stock by delta KT. So going then to the right on the line, representing delta kt. Okay, this is now our level. With this new level going again, upwards and so on and so on. And then we see we are moving from a capital stock lo lower than the steady state within in, uh, <clears throat> into the direction of the steady state. Well, if we are inside the steady state, nothing anymore happens. And the same, we can argue at this part. Oh, not that much. Oops. K0 prime. From this, we have also to go horizontally to the line representing the depreciation. But now going to the right is not possible. There is nothing. So here we have to go to the left. And also we obtain a force driving us in the direction of the steady state. So, in both cases, not anymore here, please. K0 larger K star and K0 prime, sorry, the other way around. The economy is forced to move into the direction of the steady state K star. Steady state is stable and therefore will be the long term production level within the economy. So, and what we will do now, then on Monday, is just doing partial analysis also with this model. What happens if our parameters are changing? For this, later on, we will also specify our production function with a special function. What will we do? Of course, Cobb-Douglas production functions. 
And then you can think of what happens within our model when our other two parameters, the savings rates and the depreciation rate, is changing. Yeah, and this is, so to speak, the description of the overall economy now from a neoclassical perspective. And maybe, yeah, as a homework, we can, at first, or oh, we have five minutes left, well then, be doing some thing else in this five minutes. And let's do the formal change to continuous time. Because now we have this discrete process, t, t plus 1, t plus 3, and so on. So what we have is delta kt plus 1 equals kt plus 1 minus kt equals s y kt l bar minus delta kt yt here too. So Going to continuous time means that we are squeezing our time period, which we look at. Here, maybe one year. Then we go from one year to one quarter, to one month, to one day, to one second, to one millisecond, and so on. So, and for this case, then, we are writing this process as with a general period, kt plus delta t minus kt. And since we are squeezing the time period in our description, we started, we more or less say one year. And then of course, we have to so to speak, rescale our number by the um, length of our period. Because of course, total production within a year is roughly four times total production within one quarter. And therefore, this has to divide it by the length of our time period. And this is then, of course, again, our S, Y, T, K, T, L bar minus delta K, T. And now let's do delta T is going to zero. What happens then on the left side? What have we written down there? Well, oh, let's say we just write down here T and KT developing somehow over time. This then means maybe four maybe five and this is then delta t and this is delta kt. So 
So this is, of course, still kt plus 1. So And what is this mathematically? Dividing the change in the vertical axis, in the vertical direction, by the change in the horizontal direction. This is the slope, the discrete slope of our function. And if we squeeze this down to zero, we get the slope in the point. And the slope in the point is just the first derivative. So what we have here then is, so to speak, k prime of t equals derivative of k with respect to time. And then we also write our variables in general as time dependent. So y of k of t times L bar minus delta k of t. And this is just written down the corresponding continuous representation. And quite often for the first derivative with respect to time, we are writing not a prime, but we are writing it as dot. So very often we write for the time derivative k dot of t and this is defined as k prime of t as you have seen it in school. Maybe if you um, <coughs> attended also physics until your matura, there you have also introduced this k dot as a first derivative with respect to time. So what we also quite often find is this one. I think when my, I remember it right, then Robert Solo used this dot writing in his paper, in his famous 1956 paper. Okay, now 1348. Let's stop it here.